Welcome back to the Balance Holy Podcast. I'm your host, Nikita Rensigpen. Excited to be with you as always. We are in the middle of 2022. How did we get here, people? It's already more than half the year gone by. Hopefully, if you are a steady, loyal listener of the BBP, You have been applying every personal development and balance tool we have been providing from all the phenomenal experts your way. And this one will help you, how do I say this without giving it away too much, gain a little bit more control (laughs) in your life so that you can make the rest of your year the best of your year. Let me welcome Dr. Riza Abraham. He's a Persian author, speaker, and ultra high performance coach. He happens to be certified in leadership and sales and all those wonderful things. And he's hailing right now from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Dr. Riza, how are you doing today? I'm great, unbelievable. Thank you so much for having me on your show. It's really, really amazing. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Well, I was trying not to see too much, but of course I'm a professional stalker. So I did professionally (laughs) stalk you on all the platforms and all the things. And you are really helping people and supporting them with taking control of their life and their leadership. And I would love for you to share a little bit about your work. Yeah, so I have uh, been working as a as a management consultant. I started uh, my own journey like around 20 years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, I was a full-time management consultant. And my job, because of my background, was always about engineering. So I used to work with a lot of machines. So I'm a system guy. I ah. love to create system around things. And uh, so what I have noticed that along the way, while I'm working with all these people, I noticed like no matter how well the machine works, you always need to learn how to deal with the people Mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, no matter how great the systems are, is the people who in charge of the of the process of the of the techniques that things use. And uh, so I got involved into my uh, like MBA and then PhD and all this while basically has been always around like working with people and uh, leadership has been one of the core components of uh, working with organizations. Mm -hmm. So I had the chance to work with some of like the largest organization in the world. Uh, You can take it from like a big force, PwC, KPMG, McDonald, Dell. And uh, the biggest things that I always found is that when the leaders get better, the organization gets better better so the best way to help people is to always help the leaders who are in the middle and learn how to lead from the middle it means that how you can actually empower people to be in control of their life and career and the rest has been a journey so uh along two years ago i started to write a book Mm -hmm. which is called in control and uh it's all about how to take complete control of your life and career is it possible yes it is absolutely No, this is perfect. So in my stalking, as I'm pulling you up, don't you love when people like Google you in front of your face or like pull up your Instagram? (laughs) So I'm I'm going to be one of those people right now. One of my, you have a lot of good quotes and good um, videos and splices and things on your IG, but this one stuck out for me. Mm. Um, You can see it here. I know you guys can't see it, but (laughs) so you can like have a a moment of vanity with yourself because you look very good at it. Uh, And the quote is, (laughs) I don't always have control over my surroundings, but I do have over, I do have control over how I react to them. Exactly. Which I think is poignant. What, what made you say that? And where was that coming from? So the most important things that we need to understand about life and our career is that uh, when one realizes, when we become conscious, we become aware that things around us is not always within our control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, once we manage to separate these two, a lot of good things will happen to people. Yeah. So here's the biggest realizations that I had when I went through this journey of learning how to be in control is that once we notice that we need to take full responsibility for the things that we can control and we are not supposed to apologize or even use it as an apology for the things that we can't control. Mm -hmm. And uh, how we receive things from people around us it's always the th- something that we can't control it. Yeah, we mm-hmm. can't. We can't. We can't change people's mind towards us, but we can change ourselves and surround ourselves with better people. That something is within our control. So the biggest realization for every one of us is to always ask ourselves this question: at this situation, at this moment that I am going through this experiment, mm-hmm. right? What are the things that is within my control? 
and I take full responsibility for that. And what are the things that which is not within my control? And I don't use it as an apology or even apologize for that. A thousand percent. I'm super unapologetic uh, to my husband's chagrin, I'm sure, for the last 30 years. <laughs> like, yeah, she's very unapologetic <laughs> all the time, except for when I need to be, right? Obviously. But something yep, when I, we need to admit our mistake. A- yeah? Absolutely. That's, that's so one of them. we can grow from it. A hundred percent. Yep. So I'm thinking about some of the listeners and like 80% of our listeners are entrepreneurs. The rest mm. is kind of divided up between what I call careerpreneurs. So they're creative, analytical people uh, similar to you, right? Like they may have professions and tech space, engineers, environmental, you know, all the sciences, the biosciences, all of that. So they may or may not still work in hierarchy organizations, corporate environments yep. and such. And you know, you can't control, and I'm just going to keep using your word, you can't control who you have to sit in these meetings with. You can't control mm. who your colleague is that you have to partner with on this project. You definitely yep. can't control their attitude, sometimes their negative energy, the way that they talk to you. And for them, as opposed to entrepreneurs, where we can absolutely fire our clients if we need to, mm. and yep. we have a little bit more cachet with you know what, this project is over. This is done. Of course, there's consequences to ending it. But when you're yep. in a hierarchical organization, like a corporate or, or maybe a, a larger nonprofit, you can't really walk away from the project unless you're willing to potentially walk away from that future promotion or your job altogether, which is a much bigger risk. So for those people leaning into your leadership and, and sales background a little bit, yep. what advice would you give them when they are struggling with Every time I get up in the morning and it's time for me to go in the in the work and I have to have these relationships with these people that drive me insane, what can I do? So that I don't want to punch a wall, I don't want to be the angry person at the table, and I don't want to be the person that didn't do my part because I was hiding from showing up in these collaborative environments. Yeah, Nikita, yeah, this, this, is, this actually is a very, very good question. And I think uh, it, it, <laughs> it took me a very, very long time to understand these things. And uh, I think I was very blessed. I had some great mentors yeah. who guide me, guided me through this process. So uh, to give you a bit of background about like how someone can make a decision to use this in control mm-hmm. and to make such a, such a decision in the, in the situations that you mentioned, you're working in a big organization, and you want to get your promotions, blah, 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 and all those stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I, I really encourage your audience uh, to think about these two concepts called honor and respect. Mm-hmm. Most people, they don't have a very clear understanding about what is the difference between honoring someone and respecting someone. So let me just do a very quick like explanation, yeah. the difference between these two. Respect is something that, let's say, for example, you are my boss and uh, the respect should come from me to you. Mm -hmm. It means that you have to earn that respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a job of the boss. It's a job of the leader to earn the respect from their team members. But what is the meaning of honor? Honor is something that as long as I am working in this organization and you are my boss, I have to honor you. What does that mean? It means that I would not say anything behind your back that I won't say in front of your face. I know that's right. Mm -hmm. I will always keep the honor Mm -hmm. as long as I am in this organization. And that also means that you may not respect someone, but you still have to honor them. So here's what I always tell people. The day that you cannot honor your superior, your team members, your organization is the day that you better exit. Mm. Don't stay and complain. Don't stay and go sip. Don't stay and do backbiting or anything. Because the moment people realize that honor, it's something that we are in control of it. I choose to stay in this organization. And I heard this all the time. Sometimes when I'm talking to the leaders, you know, they will say, but I want that guy to leave. No, that person will stay there for the rest of your life (laughs) because you are not in control of what that person is going to do. Mm -hmm. But you are in control of whether you should stay or you're not staying. And that is so important. You see, this is this is the big questions that we got to always ask ourselves. Is it easier to change others or change ourselves? 
obviously it's easier to change ourselves because we are in control of how we are and who we surround ourselves with. Yeah. So for those people who are staying in a big organization, you really have to really look back at the concept of honor and respect. Even if you don't respect someone, as long as you're staying in that organization, you better honor, you better honor. If you don't like it, it's time to exit. Yeah, no, I, I totally resonate with this. This I'm thinking about the, the parenting dynamic, right? On the other mm, side, yep. you know, so that was the boardroom side we were talking about and going into the home side. There's your kids, right? You're, you're a father and I'm a mother and I happen to also be a G-Bunny, which is why I'm having hot flashes up in this piece right now because <laughs> I am well <laughs> over 40 people, okay? <laughs> but in growing up in a really dysfunctional family as I did, which was filled with abuse and all kinds of different things, I did still have to honor the people that were the head of the household, although I had zero respect for them. But the moment that these lips on this little black girl were to be disrespectful, that would have been something else because they would have seen it as dishonoring and I would have had to leave the home. In my case, when I chose... When I saw growing up, like, you know what? I can't honor this anymore. I, d I don't agree with that. There's so much dysfunction. I did choose as a 17 year old girl to leave home because I could no longer honor the guardians that were supposed to keep me safe and do all the things. And you exactly. we're comparing it to workspace where we can also now go a little bit further back into, because this is all about work life and love people. We can go all the way to the bedroom in terms of our romantic relationships. If you're in a uh, monogamous relationship with another person, I call I usually call them your forever lover. But in this case, they might not be your forever if you feel like you can't honor them to use your breakdown. For the people who are listening from that side and they're like, you know what, work is OK, business is OK, whatever that looks like for me. But when I go home and I look at my wife or when I look at my husband, my partner, I not only don't respect them for whatever reason, you know, whatever was coming up in there, but I also, based on the way you broke these two concepts down, I realize I don't honor this person anymore. Do you feel like they can recreate some space in themselves to do some work? If, of course, if the other person is willing to regain a scent of a sentiment of honor, or do you think once someone loses honor, that's it. There's there's no regaining it. It's over. What do you feel? Sure. <clears throat> so um, let me define what is the definition of living a life which is in control, right? Um, in my study, when I uh, when I when I went through like ton of interview with people who I personally admire them with the life that they do and the work that they do. I, I was I was really, really admiring them for my whole life. Yeah. So the definition of the in control life is the life that where we are we love what we do. We love who we are doing it with. We love who we are doing it for and we love how are you doing it. It means how long you do it, where you do it, when you do it, and so on. Yeah. So when it comes to building an in-control life, one of the most important components of living an in-control life, which is one of our main pillars as well, it's the pillar of companion and collaboration. Mm -hmm. So companion, of course, you know, there are two sides of it. One is the work companion, the people that we are working with. And uh, there is another part of it, which is our household companion, the person that, you know, we live with, right? So it's like, you know, it could be your partner, it could be like, you know, your, your friends or whatever you want to call it. So the, the most important part of it is that I personally think as someone who is married mm -hmm. and uh, I have two children, so when it comes to relationship, most people, they're always looking at compatibility. It means that are we compatible or not? But there are many researchers like, you know, people like Dr. Gottman and who are like, you know, expert in these areas. Uh, and there are so many of them. I don't want to mention names that there are a lot of people who has done a lot of good work there. I, I personally believe that um, if you think that a relationship is a toxic relationship and you have done everything you could mm -hmm. it means that you have basically provided feedback proper feedback mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that is something that we really need to learn how to provide the feedback to our partner Absolutely. and you have you have done everything you could it means that you really believe that you have done everything you could 
then the question is that why do you still stay in that relationship? So mm-hmm. what's the reason that you're staying there? So and I always encourage people that, you know, this is something that we need to understand. It doesn't matter which side of the relationship you are, because there is always like one person who is like stronger in that relationship. And this is what we believe that, you know, kindness sometimes it could be the best answer. It means that it really can change people. And are you really serious about do the work? Yeah. And what is the driver in that relationship? It means that what is the one thing that you're not willing to sacrifice it for anything else in that relationship? Mm-hmm. And that is very important. So like, like I, I love, I love uh, what, what you are doing in your podcast. And I personally believe that, you know, I, I have gone through this before that I believe that love can really, really heal people. Absolutely. You know, I mean, Romy, uh, who is uh, like a um, 17th century Persian, uh, Persian uh, poem, he said that, we born out of love and love is our mother. We are born to give love. You know, we're born to do what we love to do with the people we love to do it. And um, is there any perfect relationship? I seriously don't think so. It's a lot of work to do. Yeah. But if you come to the point that you seriously don't see any point, then you you might want to ask or you talk to someone, get some help in that area. This is something that I, I seriously believe that we all need help. Absolutely. Help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. that was a good, that was a really great breakdown. As I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, I work with a lot of power couples and married women entrepreneurs. We don't, for our company, which is a personal development company, we don't necessarily work with the people who are asking that very powerful question that you just asked mm. of, yep. okay, things are this difficult, this bad. We really need some help. We definitely get those referrals, but we refer them out. We work with the couples that are ready to play at another level and amplify their intimacy. They're going from good to great because they want to optimize in every area, including their relationship. And because of exactly what you said, when people are at that place, when they're really asking that, hopefully asking that powerful question to themselves, they're Mm -hmm. usually dealing with a lot of, as another uh, expert that we had on the show said, 50 pound bag of old rotten potatoes that they've been carrying. Oh, yeah. Right? From yeah. childhood That's to true. relationship to relationship and so on and so forth. So, what I appreciate is you talking about being in control of yourself, first and foremost, yeah. more than anything, because you get to see that 50 pound bag of old rotten potatoes. Hopefully, Correct. you recognize it and you get to control unpacking it, Correct. throwing it away, yeah. getting rid of Correct. it so you can create the life that you're talking about. Yeah, Which was it's, it's like one, one, one very simple thing that I always tell when I'm talking to mm-hmm. power couples or to people that who are, do, who are who are having like some some issues in their relationship. Like yeah. in relationship, again, we don't want to talk about like personal relationship. It could be a work relationship. Absolutely. We all have a lot of annoying things about us, you know, <laughs> and I have seen people, they get out of a relationship just because like, for example, they're looking for 20 percent that they see in somebody else. Right. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, we all know, like, you know. When you move to the next one, the next one also is missing another 20%. There's always something that everybody is missing it. But Mm -hmm. the key point is that are you always expecting the other person to change themselves or you are willing to change first? Yeah, because again, the same concept. You are in control of how you change yourself, how you put love out, how much effort are you willing to put because it's a lot of work. It's never meant to be easy. It's never meant to be easy. So good. Yep. And we, we vibe in the, in the same space with your theory, your theology and how you're approaching this aspect. Yep. I love it. So I have to ask you as a certified coach, as a mentor, as a leader, as a husband, as a dad, how are you making space to give yourself permission to call? Oh, that's 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 a very good one. Yeah, I, I have learned about pause, I think, first time from Napoleon Bonaparte. So he said that, you know, whenever he was very angry at any of his generals, he writes the nasty letter to them, but he never sent the letter out. He just put it in his drawer. And then the next day he just look at it and he asked himself, are you going to send this out? And he wrote that he never sent any of those letters out. So one of the most important lessons that I have learned in living and work, uh, living 
and in control life and creating that work-life harmony was learning how to pause. Mm -hmm. Pause simply meaning that you just give yourself a space in a sense that you don't have to say yes to everything. You don't have to say yes to every opportunity that comes to you. Sometimes we have to be more decisive to learn that, hey, are you really, really doing this because you love doing it or are you just doing it for the sake of doing it and making extra money? So uh, this, is be- this is where I made a decision to be better in choosing what I want to do. Yeah. And when it comes to learning how to pause myself and give it, I think I would always tell people that the best way to pause it is to know where and when you can actually get that energy back. To be honest, right now, if you ask me, where is the best place that you can get your energy back is the time that I spend with my two sons. Mm -hmm. So on my calendar from 8 to 9 p.m., Mm -hmm. there's a time that has been set for my two sons. I don't carry my phone. I don't answer any calls. I don't do anything, which is basically is like designed for these two two boys, right? Mm -hmm. Because they are basically at the highest level of my life right now. They're mm-hmm. the most important people. Mm-hmm. And how you can know that is like when you are upset, you want to spend time with them. They yeah. make you feel good. And when you are when you are happy, they're the very first people you want to spend time with them. So pause and self-love is is something that it's not necessary need to be alone as long as you're getting good energy to yourself. Absolutely. To recharge and refuel in whatever way recharge works and for refuel. you. Exactly. Yeah. Love yeah. it. All right, Dr. Reza, how can people connect with you? Well, I am on in all social medias. So Dr. Reza Abraham uh, from Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and also my website, rezaabraham.com. So I would be very, very happy to connect with people. Oh, that is awesome. Thank you so much. I honor you for coming to the BBP and carving out this time. Very late for you there in Thank Malaysia. You. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me and uh, all the best for if everyone, you know, lots of love, laughter and learning for 2022. Absolutely. All right, Balance Bully listeners, weren't you excited to get those little nuggets? I know I was. It's always really good to hear confirmations and new information that you can add to your personal development toolkit. If you are new to the BBP, which is the Balance Bully podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men, The best way to say thank you to Dr. Rizza, to myself, is to make sure that you rate this episode and then share with someone in your ecosystem who could benefit from these amazing gems that he was dropping today. Please do so. Until next time, enjoy the balance of your day, but remember, do it boldly. 